This is one of my favorite sections because we're going to be able to talk about yoga tradition as well as neuropsychology. There is a, um, this, this slide um, points towards the yoga sutras. And sutras are verses or texts that explain, in this case, how, what yoga is and how it works, what it does. The Yoga Sutras were written by a seer named Patanjali about 6,000 years ago. And in the very first chapter, the second verse or sutra explains the purpose of yoga. Now, it's always interesting to talk about yoga in the West because we can become very confused about what yoga does and what its purpose is. Uh, I'd like to tell a story and offer a parable that the sages were said to have offered to explain the suffering of people. You up for a story? Yeah? Okay. So the story goes that in India, about 6,000 years ago, the leaders were very concerned about their people. They saw a lot of suffering, and some of the suffering was hunger, domestic violence, um, not enough work, um, uh, water that wasn't healthy to drink, etc. So as we look at these kinds of concerns, they're pretty familiar even today, aren't they? So they asked for help from the sages. The sages were sent a message, however sages get messages. Uh, and they came down from the mountains, the Himalayas, into the palace. And they uh, were, were asked for help um, to alleviate the suffering of the people. And the sages said, this is a very worthy charge, and we'll see what arises. So they went back up into the Himalayas and they moved into deep meditation. And from that meditation started to spring mudras or seals and postures and uh, deep relaxation and meditation practices and kriyas or cleansing practices and yogic psychology and on and on. So they continued to practice for many, many months to refine uh, these, th these downloads, so to speak. And when they felt these were well refined, they came back down the mountain and talked with the leaders. And they said to the leaders that they thought they had some tools that would help to alleviate the suffering. And they explained well, the suffering with this parable. They said, there are many monkeys swinging from tree to tree, and they're screaming in pain. They're screaming in pain because they've been stung in the behind by scorpions. Anyone ever experienced a scorpion sting? You haven't? What do you guess that sting is? You want me to tell you? Okay. So think of whether this is at all familiar to you. It's certainly something that I've experienced more than I would like to admit. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, let's see, what did I forget? What did I, forget? oh, I didn't ask my spouse to pick up that second kid after soccer today, so I'm gonna have to dash out of this seminar go pick up the kid after soccer, and then, oh, oh no, there's nothing in the fridge, no food. What am I gonna do with that? Oh, well, I guess I can call for pizza tonight. We'll eat pizza tonight. One more time, uh, at least I'll get the healthier pizza. It'll be all right, I'll get the healthier pizza. They'll be okay, one more time with pizza. And then, and then oh, yeah, there's that science project. Isn't that due tomorrow and we haven't even started? A trip to Walmart, gotta pick up some supplies for that. And then, and then the dry cleaners, tomorrow is that big meeting, gotta have the suit. Do you ever have that going on in your mind? Okay, so that's considered in a way the scorpion sting. Or maybe the scorpion sting looks like this. Someone stepped on her toes, they said or did something, and uh, the mind starts saying, hmm, 
Well, I'm just going to tell them all about this. I have said before, you don't need to be acting this way. I don't want this to happen anymore. And how dare they? I just can't believe they did this. So the scorpion sting is the chattering of the mind. And that's why the monkeys are screaming in pain, swinging from tree to tree. The mind's running away with them and adding to their suffering. As human beings, we'll all have some suffering. We'll have initial suffering. Um, uh, we'll get sick, or there'll be a car accident, or uh, a beloved pet will die. That's suffering that's a part of life. What we do with that suffering is uh, where we have choices, where we can experience the scorpion sting, or we can avoid that scorpion sting. So that if we're able to work with the mind, yoga suggests that we'll have less suffering. So let's go back to the Yoga Sutras to talk a little more about that. In Sanskrit, this second sutra of the first chapter that explains what yoga does uh, is Yogas Chitta Vritti Niroraha. Yogas Chitta Vritti Naroraha. The translation from uh, Swami Vivekananda is yoga is the restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff. Another way to say that is that the goal of yoga is to calm and still the mind. In the West, we may think that it's so that we can lose weight, or we can have yoga butt, or we can have a yoga, <laughs> or we can have a yoga glow, or uh, we might even believe that the goal of yoga is so that we can wear our uh, yoga wardrobe to the studio, those cute little tights and things, right? Uh, but that's really not the goal. Those are nice side effects. The, nothing wrong with those. Those can be fun. The real goal is to calm and still the mind so that we alleviate our own suffering and have a better quality of life as a result. George Furstein, in his uh, 2011 work, a yogic scholar and yogic practitioner, views yoga as a, a system of human development with the aims of alleviating suffering and promoting optimal physical and mental health. So in some ways, these aims are not so far off from our aims as healthcare providers, and certainly alleviating suffering through calming and stilling the mind is uh, very, very on track for working with mental health concerns, right? Mm 